What's that bright light outside? It looks like it's summertime, which means it's time for boating. So you may remember sometime last year I did a series of boat building tutorials or videos and I built a boat frame out of expanded polystyrene um, which was then wrapped in fiberglass to make the frame rigid. Um, basically I used woven rovings tied on with string and then doused it in polyester resin and I primed the polystyrene first with PVA to stop it eating in. There's me attaching the skin which was actually just a piece of fleece blanket um, just like a kind of fleece top you'd get but a blanket that I bought off eBay just the fabric uh, which was fixed all over and then that was in turn doused in polyester resin and reinforced with a uh, normal fiberglass mat so that made quite a rigid boat um, after a couple of small modifications to make the boat a bit more shallow um, mainly cutting it in half um, we took it out and tested it in the sea um, so it didn't break into pieces, it's actually still quite robust and um, it's still in one piece now. So you can see me paddling there and I've got a thing in the boat, the yellow thing is a thing called a sea do, which is a thing with a propeller that pulls you along while you're snorkelling, uh, which I was going to drop in the water on a frame and use to propel the boat. Um, that didn't work very well, so today we're going to look at other propulsion techniques. So I decided to have a go at 3D printing a propeller mainly to see if one I could design one in Autodesk 123D which is free software and it's quite limited so doing the twisted blades is quite interesting and the other thing was to see um, if I could 3D print it and actually have it stand up to um, propelling the boat so um, here's my design it's fairly simple um, there's no way of twisting a plane in Autodesk 123D design so I had to cheat to do this twist on the blades Let's just get rid of the base um, so I basically had to cut a curved section out of a solid block and then draw the blade shape on it um, diagonally to get the curve to cut across the blade diagonally. Um, and then the three blades were attached of course to a cylinder and all the edges rounded off. Um, there's some debate over propeller design, obviously it's quite a complicated subject in terms of its dynamics. Um, I did this sort of freehand, I haven't used anything to calculate it. Um, and I haven't simulated it, so it's purely um, a design off my, my own head. Um, I've seen people making propellers manually on YouTube, which seem to work okay by just fiberglassing onto a curved surface um, and cutting a bit out with scissors to make the blade. So I've effectively um, used the same principle, but with um, cutting the section out virtually in CAD. So a couple of people told me that the, my um, propellers should be aerofoil shaped, so the, th the front of the blade is thicker than the back. So I also had to go at a second design, where you can see the front edge um, is much thicker than the back edge. So the back edges are much thinner, um, and the front edge is almost thicker, although actually it's kind of the, the thick edge hasn't come along enough um, into the centre of that propeller towards the cylinder. It's kind of um, thicker on the outside, so it's not quite right, and that's purely because I um, cut my propeller shaped out shape out of the curved piece at the wrong angle also made a two blade version um, but I've looked at quite a lot of pic pic pictures of propellers and a lot of them are just flat um, effectively like my th my first design but thinner so I think what I'm going to do is stick with the first design print that out and then sand the back of the blade to get the thin edge on it um, which apparently stops bubbles which can um, blow blades apart or blow propellers apart at high speed uh, mine's going to be electric so I'm not too concerned and I'm, I think on the whole my original design will push water backwards although it probably won't be that efficient. So I printed this propeller off when I was exhibiting at Winchester Science Festival a few weeks ago. Um, you can look in my channel for the vlog on that entitled Daleks and DeLoreans. And this is printed on my Lulzbot Taz with a half mil nozzle and a 0.35 mil layer height. So my propeller's in a box. Um, which is acetone safe and I've put acetone in the bottom of the box this liquid in the bottom and the uh, vapour is just going to um, eat away and smooth out that propeller over several hours so I actually printed two propellers when I was exhibiting at Winchester because um, we had to show the public lots of 3D printed things and printers in progress so this is an unsmoothed one um, so it's quite rough. I over extruded this deliberately so I could make it stronger so the layers get mashed together hence all the mess on it. There was some support material on the bottom um, so that's kind of a raw print. 
and this is the one that I've partially smoothed. You can still kind of see the lines, but actually it's quite smooth to the touch. Uh, it's nice and glossy. And um, I sanded that back um, edge there before I smoothed it, as I mentioned, to try and make it a bit sharper than the original, which is actually quite wide. Whether that'll have any difference or not, I don't know. So the propeller faces this way um, and turns this way and water gets pushed backwards. So it'll be on the end of a shaft like this. So um, I'm actually going to stick it onto a wooden shaft. So I've got a dowel rod just here, which fits incredibly snugly. So that's good. And that's going to be attached by um, acetone welding. So I know from experience that if you um, acetone vapor bath smooth a piece of plastic while it's on top of some wood, um, the two will end up bonded together because the plastic dissolves and soaks into the grain of the wood. So I'm actually going to use some acetone dissolved in ABS soak the end of the wood in acetone, put some of my um, ABS dissolved in acetone in the hole, put the two together, bodge around the seams with more ABS dissolved in acetone and that should make um, a pretty permanent bond. And the rest of this whole assembly is going to be built out of scrap items. So the motor that's going to turn this is a windscreen wiper motor. So this is the thing or windshield wiper motor which is one of these. Now normally um, this is fixed on here and in this bag I've got some rather greasy bits, but there's a massive gear uh, which is normally in there and there's basically it's a worm gear, so this worm drives a big gear and the output shaft is normally on here. So these are really good workhorse motors because um, you're, you know, how often does your windshield wiper motor fail? If you're driving down the motorway or the freeway at 70 miles an hour in the rain and wind it carries on wiping your windscreen, so they're fairly hefty motors um, as you can see. 12 volts, it's got dual windings, so it's got three wires, one common and um, two others, and depending on which ones you connect, you, connect, you can get um, dual speed from it, which is quite good. It's very useful in this case at least. Um, basically that's going to be directly coupled to the other end of this shaft, and I'm just going to dip that end in the water, so there's no clever mechanics or translation of the motion, it's literally just going to be further up that way with a, with a coupler. And the whole thing's going to be mounted on some plywood, and I've got some fairly hefty bearings here to mount the drive shaft on, which came out of a hot tub motor. So um, I believe they were quite noisy at high speed, but I'm not going anywhere near. Well, in fact, I think it wasn't the bearings in the end, there was some of a fault on the motor, but nonetheless I've got these bearings which feel fine. I'm um, going the speed I'm going with that, it's going to be fine. And I think that one is um, a brand new one, which was one of the replacements. So, um, let's 3D print some more parts to mount the motor and all the other bits and pieces, and we'll get that together. So I've 3D printed some other parts. We've got some, some motor mounts, which are this shape, that fit the flat on the motor quite well. So there's a pair of those that are going to grip the motor, so there'll be two bolts through onto a piece of wood. So it's going to be a plank of wood that holds all of this. Uh, we've got these bearing blocks now sorted, so I've pushed my bearings in, they're an extremely tight fit, and those have got two screw holes to screw them down. So if I've got that right, that should be exactly the right height for the middle of the motor, or at least the middle of the spindle. And I've got this coupler here, which are two sections which go together face to face, with a, a small hole in one end and a big hole in the other end which should grip that. I'm just going to grip onto that cam, uh, sorry, onto that worm gear and pad it out if I need to, to grip it. I can't get the gear off, it's fixed on extremely well. It may even be part of the actual um, motor. And the other end should grip the dowel, which is um, just slightly smaller, so I'll bolt those two together face to face and that will be the shaft coupler. Right, so if you can see that among all the other junk on the table, um, we've now got the whole assembly put together. So, there's my motor with its bracket. I actually dropped the uh, rigid joining piece, which is this piece, um, and I've put a flexible one on. I don't know if you can just see that. It's made of basically flexible clear pipe. I've also put some Gorilla Glue in there to hold it on and just cable tied it tight on both halves. Uh, the thinner spindle there's got another piece of pipe in to block out the size. Um, the reason for that was that the dowel rod isn't perfectly straight. Um, it spins off centre, so that if this is rigid, it makes the whole thing vibrate. So I've used a flexible linkage there. Um, I've got my bearings in there. 
Um, so this is a bit of wood it's mounted on. I've sprayed it silver with some car paint in an attempt to stop water soaking into it straight away. Uh, the bottom of it is going to be in the water and I've sealed the dowel rod there with duct tape. Um, the propeller's glued on so that's uh, looking pretty good and there's the bottom bearing. So I would have made this shaft longer um, only the dowel is quite warped basically. It's really hard to get straight bits of wood so obviously if it's longer then it wobbles more so um, hopefully it's not so close that it'll affect the dynamics any more than the terrible propeller design will. Um, but I think that's going to be pretty good. So what we need to do is, uh, before we go and take a boat out in the seas, go and dump this in some water and see what, um, see what it looks like. Right, we're in the bathroom. So I've got down here a uh, 70 amp hour leisure battery, which is the sort of thing you'd use to power the fridge in your caravan or something like that. Um, I've just bought that, it comes fully charged, so it should be good. And I've got um, a box of water and my propeller um, in the bath. So we're going to um, power this up now and attempt to see how much thrust we get and whether it generally works, which I'm expecting it to do something. So uh, I'm going to attempt to uh, try not to make too much of a mess. Um, going to be interesting. So let's submerge this fully and try this. Yeah, I'm definitely, um, it's actually really hard to keep still. There's quite a lot of thrust there. Will it work in real water? Well, you'll have to watch the next video to find out. So if you click on the link that's on the screen now, that'll take you to my testing the boat in water with the electric outboard video. I've also put the link in the description for mobile users.